the horrifically dystopian Squid Game is filled with sneaky clues and easter eggs that predict the frontman's real identity, all the major character deaths and hint to some theories on what to expect from a second season. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan and in this video I'm revealing over 45 twisted details you might have missed in Squid Game. Spoilers ahead, so take care. Although the mysterious frontman who oversees the games remains hidden behind a mask till late in the series, the show does give us a tantalising clue early on to his true identity as policeman Jun Ho's missing brother. When Jun Ho visits his sibling's apartment in episode 2, look carefully and you'll see he's heavily into art. That's crucial because if you look at the frontman, you'll see how his interest in cubism has influenced him and his surroundings. For example, look out for objects fractured into geometrical angular shapes with convex or convex concave surfaces. The idea of that look in cubism was to show objects from multiple perspectives at the same time rather than just one. When Gion, Sabiok and Son Wu make it to the final round, they're served a final meal which the creator has said is meant to look like the Last Supper. For Gion though, when the steak is revealed, the moment is especially significant because his daughter was taken to a steakhouse by her stepfather for her birthday. Prior to the games, Gion had also planned to treat her to an expensive meal, but after losing his winnings, could only afford something much cheaper. So getting a plate of steak at this point feels particularly ironic. And this might be a bit of a stretch, but some fans have suspected the stepfather, who's also Gion's nemesis, may be connected in some way to the games, so this steak may hint at that. Also notice how the three tables are set out in a triangular shape, and these are on a large circle filled with black and white squares, so the entire layout is made up of the three squid game symbols, a circle, a triangle and a square. One of the three survivors at this point in the Squid Games is Son Wu, and there's some foreshadowing of this moment in the second episode, when his mother was talking to him on the phone and she was interrupted by a customer asking for three squids. Some other hidden squid references and symbols in the series include the hair clip in the shape of the Squid Game logo on the giant Robo doll's head. The elevator entrance to the front man's room also has intersecting circles, triangles and a square shape. The guards are organised into three types by the Squid Game symbols on their masks. And the Squid Game logo is also highlighted in the guards' hot pink uniform colour in the show's title. One of the brilliant things about the series is how it manages to get you invested in lots of characters even though we know they're going to die because of the very nature of the game. And many of those deaths are intriguingly telegraphed early on. The way Minyo dies as she grabs hold of Doc Su, leans back and falls through the glass, was foreshadowed back in the Tug of War game when she commented that leaning back made her feel so much more powerful. Doc Su also foreshadowed his death in the second episode when he jumped off a bridge to escape from his enemies. Jun Ho's death as he falls into the sea mirrors how he dumped the Squid Game worker's body after stealing his identity so he could go undercover in the game. Ali's heartbreaking death when he discovers that Son Wu has cheated him out of his bag of marbles echoes how he stole a packet of cash from his boss who owed him money. Sabiok dies with her throat slit by Son Wu, the thing she threatened to do to the guy who lost the money she gave him to help get her family out of North Korea. And if you look closely, you can also spot a scar already on her neck, another bit of foreshadowing for her fate. And Son Wu kills himself at the end, like he almost did when the police were tracking him down in the second episode. There's a popular theory about the red and blue tile game, which posits that players who choose a blue tile go on to become participants in the game, whereas those who choose a red tile become the jumpsuit wearing workers. The original inspiration for the Salesman's game is very creepy and based on a Korean urban legend called Red Tissue, Blue Tissue, which is itself based on a Japanese horror story, where a ghost appears to people using a public bathroom and offers them red or blue toilet paper. There are many variations of the story, but those who choose red are generally killed in a gruesome bloody fashion, whereas those choosing blue are suffocated to death. The giant killer robot in the bone-chilling challenge Red Light Green Light is based on a character who featured in Korean primary school books used to teach children how to read in the 70s and 80s. And we see that same shocking contrast between the game's childhood origins and the brutal adult contest in the show's brightly coloured sets and costumes, which give the competition a childlike fairy tale feel or strange fantasy vibe. A recurring theme in the show is how the Blue Danube is played over the loudspeakers just before each of the deadly games is about to start. 
The famous waltz by Johann Strauss Jr. becomes a terrible harbinger of what's to come, and the incongruously light-hearted nature of the music is completely at odds with the deception, death and destruction that awaits the players in every game. It even plays during the final trio's Last Supper, adding to the horrific nature of the situation. The Blue Danube was originally written to help lift the mood of the Austrian nation in the 1860s after the country had lost a war, was economically depressed, and morale was generally low. And the Squid Games organisers may be trying to use this upbeat tune in a similar way, to encourage the players who are in financial straits to raise their spirits and keep playing. The music's also used in this amazing shot from above where the players move along MC Escher-inspired stairs, with their seemingly endless motion around the spiral-style staircase reminiscent of the constant dizzying turns of the Viennese waltz. The trippy look and disorienting design of the staircases is also a deliberate homage to Escher's art piece Relativity, in which the usual laws of gravity don't make sense, an analogy perhaps for the horrific reality of the Squid Games. When many players announce they want to abandon ship after the Red Light Massacre, the prize money they'll end up forfeiting is announced, and as the cash drops into a massive Perspex piggy bank, it's accompanied by the sound of a chip tune. Similar music played during the scene in the first episode, where Guillaume tried to win a present at the arcade for his daughter's birthday. Another horrifying connection between the arcade and the Squid Games is that the present Gion wins for his daughter comes wrapped in a black box with a bow, similar to the coffins used for disposing of dead bodies in the Squid Games. Check out the multiple pictures the frontman has in his old apartment of a dark street at night underneath a bright blue sunlit sky. They're from the Empire of Light collection by surrealist artist René Magritte, and inspired this iconic scene in The Exorcist. Like so much in the Squid Games, they point to the unsettling and upsetting contrasts of the show's world, where kids' games have deadly consequences, and brothers who once sacrificed a kidney to save your life end up shooting you off a cliff to your death. By the way, if you're intrigued by the frontman's character and wanted to know more, the show's creator has said a potential season 2 might explore his story in greater detail while also including more on the police. The VIP episode makes it clear that there are squid games happening in other parts of the world. The contest in Korea was the best. Meaning the secret network that runs the diabolical enterprise must be relatively extensive. And in the final episode, the meeting that Gion has with his bank manager reveals a clue that the bank itself or its manager may also be involved. The hint is in how the bank employee mentions they have a VIP-only service for wealthy individuals like Gion. The term VIP here seems specific and could suggest Gion is being offered the opportunity to become an observer at the game should he wish. After all, Ilnam mentioned on his deathbed that he started the games with other people who, like him, were basically bored despite being hugely rich. The deposit of so much money into Gion's account would also, under money laundering rules, likely trigger an investigation into the source of the funds, and this doesn't appear to have happened. It's also suspicious that Jun Ho's call to the Korean police just before he was killed hasn't resulted in anything. After all, the location of his call could have been easily traced by his boss. It could simply be police incompetence. However, it could also suggest there are higher ups in his police department who've been paid off by the Squid Games not to investigate the yearly disappearance of hundreds of people. A twisted detail that was deliberately hidden from players is that from the start, all six games to be played were depicted on the walls of the dorm area. In the beginning, these were obscured by the players' bunk beds, and although knowing what the games would be would have given everyone much better odds of survival, it's only as more and more players are killed off that the true nature of each game is revealed. I think the added meaning here is that despite all the frontman's claims that the games are fair, the truth is intentionally hidden from participants and only revealed to the few who make it to the end. Another example of the injustice of those in charge of the system is when Ali goes to claim his unpaid wages and finds his boss playing a computer game rather than trying to fix his business so he can pay his workers. Just like the VIPs in charge of the Squid Games, Ali's boss is only interested in his own entertainment at the expense of others. 
So did you spot any other interesting details or easter eggs in Squid Game? And what do you think was the most horrifying or heartbreaking moment in the show? Leave your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you enjoyed this and a thumbs up and a share are hugely appreciated. You can tap left for my next Netflix video including a full breakdown of the symbolism, monster and ending of horror series Midnight Mass. Or tap right for something else you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee-ki-yay movie lovers!